The positive feedback is also a feedback loop. So it's got the same idea of the same components. We're going to have a stimulus, a receptor, a integrator, a, re a target, and a response. But that response is not going to turn off the system. So this system, positive feedback, is not designed to maintain homeostasis. It's important for body functioning, but it doesn't directly maintain homeostasis. It doesn't directly, okay? Um, we're not maintaining a regulated variable. So in positive feedback, the response is going to reinforce the stimulus and reinforce the process and amplify it in order to complete a process opposed to maintain. So let's actually um, draw this out, kind of the difference here. Remember with negative feedback, the response did what to the stimulus? Turned it off. So the response would say that shivering turns, turns off the system and with really the stimulus, right? There's no longer a stimulus for um, hot. You're counteracting that stimulus by sway. It's not turned off if you're still in the heat, right? But the system is designed to um, counteract. In positive feedback, it's going to be different. The response is designed to amplify or accelerate the stimulus and therefore the process, the system. Reinforce it. So it's going to take that regulated variable even further away from its set point. So let's say we have um, cold, right? That's a regulated, temperature is a regulated variable. So you're going to have um, shivering as a response to that. That's acting to counteract that stimulus. That's a negative feedback thing. Let's just imagine you had this same um, components here in a positive feedback system. So let's say you your body was um, dysfunctioning and in response to cold, instead of shivering, you sweat. Well, that response would be acting to amplify the stimulus because as you sweat, you get wet and that's gonna make you colder not ideal, right? You're gonna get colder and colder the more you're sweating because of what the response is. So that's an example that doesn't occur in your body. There are examples where positive feedback occurring where it is beneficial. But the idea of an ever increasing response that sends the system temporarily out of control is the idea of positive feedback. Um, the loop then, you might think, what causes it to stop, right? Because for negative feedback, the response causes the system to turn off given environmental conditions changing. For positive feedback, something else, something has to change for it to stop. So an external event. Example is gonna be having a baby. When the baby comes out, that's a change. That's something that's different. So first let's do a learning check here. Um, apparently it's gonna pop up. There we go, learning check five. So answer this question in the body, what type of functions do positive feedback loops perform? What do you think? Well, you might not know exactly besides this is one where process of elimination is gonna be pretty helpful. Basically these three things here are all definitions of negative feedback. Right, so minimizing um, changes in conditions, homeostatic regulation, long-term control over internal conditions, these are all characteristics of negative feedback. In contrast, positive feedback is designed to act quickly um, and be completed quickly. So examples are childbirth, which I'll walk through in just a moment here, milk let down um, for a child as well, inflammation, um, blood clotting, um, and the action potential is actually another example. Those are all things that need to happen, processes that need to happen quickly. 
there are other examples. Not all examples of positive feedback are like emergency, dangerous situations. Okay, so example of positive feedback. Um, childbirth. I'm actually going to want the pictures to show up here. Here we go. So what's going to happen in childbirth is the stimulus is going to be cervical stretch. So let's say in a human, it's about 40 weeks of gestation, and the baby drops down into um, lower in, in the uterus, and that's going to cause um, stretch to occur. This is going to stimulate oxytocin release from the hypothalamus, which is not in here. The, the hypothalamus um, releases oxytocin, which causes uterine contraction. This is contraction of the uterus that are going to push the baby out. But this is actually going to be our response. Baby pushes against the cervix more. That's increasing the process. Here is the positive feedback part. We don't want uterine contractions to turn off the system. We want the system to keep going until the baby's out. So I'm going to draw this out, this process, um, with the same drawing we did for negative feedback. Okay, so here are those components that make up a feedback loop. The stimulus, the cervical stretch, that's the original stimulus when the baby drops and it's a developmental thing. Um, that's gonna cause sensory receptors located at the cervix to detect that stretch. They're actually mechanoreceptors. The information will be sent to the hypothalamus, actually gonna be via um, sensory, sensory nerves. So, nervous signals to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus releases oxytocin that targets the uterus and, and, and um, stimulates contraction. That's this part right here. So these two are broken down by that. These contractions are gonna do what to the system? Uterine contractions are going to amplify the stimulus. They're going to push the baby further down, causing more stretch, causing the system to accelerate, reinforcing this system until when? Until the baby comes out, which is what you want. You don't want contractions to turn off the system. Um, you don't want that. You want this process to continue until completion. Two more terms I want to lay, label here that I didn't in the previous video. Uh, there's two more components to a feedback system that are not like, so here's our, sometimes I like to put these ones in boxes. These last two boxes are not really, these are the physical things. So it's three. Sensory nerves, this is called an input signal. This is how the signal gets from the sensor to the integrator. Oftentimes it's nerve, not always. The output signal is oxytocin. And oftentimes with this feedback loop, oxytocin is considered the thing that is like the target of positive feedback. It kind of is, like oxytocin is more and more produced and it is amplified, but it's really just the output signal. Um, more and more of it is produced by the hypothalamus, but the goal of the oxytocin, its job is to trigger uterine contractions. Uterine contractions are what are what is going to get the baby out. That was said really weird. It's uterine contractions that are going to allow the baby to come out ultimately. Okay. Um, I think that's what I want for positive feedback for now. 
and we will not see as many examples of this because um, this is not the process of homeostasis, but we will see it some, and you need to be able to contrast it to negative feedback. That's a learning goal, a learning outcome, for example. Um, and let's actually do that right here. Here's two examples. Um, here's the first one, and we'll go through these. Actually, I'll pop them both. No, we'll do one at a time. But pause the video, answer this first one with body temperature becoming too low. Okay, this causes constriction. Might also cause shivering eventually, but that's just not what I say here. Okay, do you know what this is? Negative feedback, right? Right, we're maintaining a variable, we're maintaining body temperature and the constriction of these blood vessels. Um, if you can remember what that did, that might have, you know, you could put that in your notes. I was unsure what constriction meant. Um, this is going to cause the blood to stay the core of the body. Um, what, no, I, oh, I did tell you there. Yeah, look at that. You should know that. Um, what's going to turn this off? Well, an increase in body temperature to the normal range, which is, occurs due to the response. Right, the response influences this, causes this. Okay, what about this next one? In the stomach, there's partially digested protein triggering the secretion of this stuff. For example, an enzyme that digests proteins. What type of feedback is it if this um, causes more pepsin to be released? Pepsin causes more pepsin to be released via protein digestion. Pause the video for yourself if that's better. Okay. This, right, is positive feedback. This is a process that needs to happen. Digestion um, needs to occur. And the um, response of this system, which is digesting proteins, is causing the process to occur more instead of turning it off so that you can fully digest your protein. You don't want to turn it off. What causes this to turn off in the end? Well, it is the system acting, of course, over time, but ultimately it's going to be the absence of proteins because they're eventually going to be broken down and moved through the system. So these proteins are going to move through the digestive system and eventually be gone as digestive digestion occurs. So that will turn off the system, just like childbirth. Digestion and childbirth, basically the same. Not really. 